And if you're operating under that sort of misguided notion that it's all about food selection and calories don't matter, as long as you just eat the right foods and you follow the right type of diet, then it genuinely could have a negative impact on your results. What's up guys, Sean Nalawani, realscienceathletics.com. And in this video today, I wanna to talk about a very common misconception when it comes to the subject of calories and fat loss. Uh, there seems to be a pretty big sort of backlash nowadays against the notion of calories in versus calories out. Um, there's a pretty substantial anti-calorie crowd out there who will say that uh, calories in versus calories out is flawed, or even that the whole model is straight up irrelevant when you're trying to lose fat. Hey everybody. Now there is some truth to the general argument argument that they usually give to this, which I'll explain in a minute here, but it's still usually based on a fundamental misunderstanding of what calories actually are, um, how calorie deficits work, and what calories in versus calories out actually means. Before I jump into it, if you're new here, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button below and hit the notification bell as well to stay in the loop on all of my future uploads. And if you enjoy the no BS content here on the channel, make sure to hit that like button below as well. So nowadays, there are a lot of people out there who just don't like the term calories in general because it can kind of stir up images of uh, obsessive eating behaviors and overly restrictive dieting and things like that. But in reality, calories are just a unit of energy. That's really all a calorie is. It's just a measurement that describes how much energy there is in the foods we eat and in the tissues on our body. And a very common argument that you'll hear is that calories in versus calories out is flawed or even that it's totally irrelevant because different foods are gonna be processed differently in the body. And because of that, you can't just look at the calories only. Now, there is truth to that. Yes, different foods do have different effects in the body. 500 calories from one food is not necessarily the same thing as 500 calories from a different food. And that's because uh, it's protein content, it's uh, fiber, micronutrient composition, where it falls on the satiation index, um, it's calorie to volume ratio, all of those things will have an effect on how that specific food acts once it's actually in your body. So yeah, the food quality and macronutrient composition of a given diet does play a role in the fat burning process. And you could take five different 2000 calorie diets and each one could produce differing results to a certain degree, even though they all contain 2000 calories. However, what most people don't realize, um, and this is kind of the main point here, which is somewhat theoretical, but I'll also give you some practical guidelines after as well, but the main point is that the way food quality and macronutrients impact fat loss is still ultimately a result of how they affect the calories in versus calories out equation. And if you don't like the word calories for some reason, then you can just use uh, the word energy instead. Just say uh, energy in versus energy out. When you consume different foods with different nutritional profiles, your net fat storage and your net fat loss is being affected either because those foods cause you to absorb a differing amount of uh, total energy or because they cause you to expend a differing amount of total energy. Energy can't be created or destroyed, it can only change forms. And so when it all comes down to it, it's still a matter of calories in versus calories out. And I'll give you a few examples of this. Protein would be an obvious one. Uh, protein has the highest thermic effect of the three macronutrients, meaning that your body burns more calories in order to digest it. Protein is about 20 to 30% TEF, carbs are five to 10% and fats are zero to 3%. So if you go from eating a low protein diet up to a higher protein diet, you're actually burning more calories through digestion. So it's directly affecting the calories out portion of the equation. Um, if you're training properly and consistently, then protein is also gonna help you build muscle. And since muscle is more metabolically active than fat tissue, uh, the more muscle you're carrying, the more calories you're also going to burn at rest. So it's still calories in versus calories out in that the protein is literally helping you burn more calories. Uh, satiation is another factor. Certain foods are higher on what's called the satiation index, which means that you'll naturally feel fuller after eating them. So if you eat higher satiation foods, you'll likely end up consuming fewer total calories overall, uh, probably without even realizing it, assuming you're not tracking your calories in detail. And so that's affecting the calories in. Uh, the calorie density of foods is a factor too. If you eat foods that contain fewer calories relative to their volume, uh, so that's generally gonna be minimally processed whole foods, uh, you know, leaner protein sources, low fat dairy, vegetables, fruits, things like that the higher food volume will physically fill your stomach up more and so you'll end up eating less and taking in fewer calories overall. And this is where some people get confused because they'll say, 
uh, you know, I didn't track calories. I just focused on eating clean and I ended up losing fat. Therefore, calories don't matter and it's all about food quality. But what they don't realize is that uh, those higher quality foods are usually just lower in calories in general and they're more filling as well. And so the reason why those foods make fat loss easier is precisely because they cause you to take in fewer calories by default. Uh, we could also look at micronutrients. So again, if you're focusing on minimally processed, nutrient dense whole foods, that's going to make sure that all of your vitamin and mineral needs are being met, which is going to help you maintain an optimal hormonal environment in your body. Um, it's going to keep your uh, energy and your strength uh, levels higher, and those things will affect total calories out. Uh, fiber is a factor too. When you consume higher amounts of fiber, you actually absorb fewer calories overall. So again, that's affecting calories in. On top of all of those things, there's also the question of specific dietary approaches. For example, uh, we could look at intermittent fasting or even ketogenic diets. Both of those diets, once you are adapted to them, they can have uh, significant appetite suppressing effects. Now the research is uh, pretty clear so far that neither one has an inherent fat burning advantage, but if your hunger is suppressed as a result of fasting for a portion of the day, or as a result of following a ketogenic diet, you're naturally going to eat less. And that is going to, again, affect the calories in portion of the equation. There's nothing magical about these diets. Um, they're just methods that can make maintaining a net calorie deficit easier. And so again, this is where people get mixed up. They don't understand what calories actually are, um, which is just a measurement of energy. And they don't realize that the way food selection actually impacts fat loss is because of how it affects the total energy going in versus the total energy going out. So if someone tries to tell you that uh, calories don't matter or that calories in versus calories out is a myth uh, or that a calorie is not a calorie, you pretty much know right there that they ultimately don't truly understand what they're talking about. A calorie deficit is a mandatory requirement for losing fat. You have to expend more energy than you take in. That's what stimulates your body to tap into its excess fat stores for energy. And all calories technically are the same because a calorie is a fixed unit of measurement. However, not all foods are the same. And it is true that by optimizing your food selection and finding the daily eating pattern that works best for you in terms of uh, controlling hunger and maximizing energy and training performance, that will help to tilt the calorie balance uh, equation more in your favor. But the overall calorie balance still rules everything when it all boils down to it. So the people who preach this sort of anti-calorie idea, they are correct in the sense that a food's caloric value on paper before it goes into your mouth, uh, that does not tell the whole story since different foods uh, require differing amounts of energy to digest. They have different fiber and micronutrient profiles and they affect hunger levels differently as well. However, they are wrong to then take that and then claim that that means that calories don't matter or that calories in versus calories out uh, is an incorrect model. Since again, it still boils down to the net energy going in versus the net energy going out. And in order to lose fat, you still need to create a calorie deficit by expending more calories than you take in. So, Part of this whole uh, calories in versus calories out thing is partly an issue of semantics and it is partly a genuine misunderstanding of calories in general. And if you're operating under that sort of misguided notion that it's all about food selection and calories don't matter as long as you just eat the right foods and you follow the right type of diet, then it genuinely could have a negative impact on your results. Because the key thing to remember is that food quality that can only take you so far. It only impacts the energy balance equation to a limited degree, and it has pretty sharp diminishing returns as well. Sure, if you're going from a really crappy, highly processed, low protein, calorie dense diet, and then you switch over to a more unprocessed, higher protein, nutrient dense diet, yes, that will definitely make a measurable difference all on its own, and you'll probably start losing fat without even needing to worry about tracking calories at all. That doesn't mean that the calories don't matter, it just means that by default, you're gonna to end up in a deficit because you'll be eating fewer calories than you were before since you'll be fuller and more satisfied and because your food choices um, have essentially been cleaned up a bit meaning again higher thermic effect more fiber higher micronutrients increased energy to work out etc however once your diet is already decently optimized uh, in terms of food quality and especially as you get leaner and leaner then you are going to need to pay more attention and you're probably going to need to start tracking things uh, in more detail if you want to continue losing more fat because fat loss does get harder the leaner you get. Uh, once your fat loss stalls, which um, it inevitably will, assuming you're trying to get reasonably lean, what are you going to do at that point? You know, you can't just keep eating cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. Once your diet has uh, all the basics in place, meaning uh, enough 
protein, so 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight daily or higher if you prefer, uh, but that's a good minimum range. Uh, you're focusing on less calorie dense, higher satiation foods, you're getting in enough fiber, you're drinking enough water, sleeping properly, um, and you're following a good, well-structured training plan. At that point, it really does just come down to managing calories in versus calories out on paper. And if you try to dismiss this entirely and just stick with the idea that it's all about food selection, you could end up plateaued for a very long period of time when all you needed to do was just lower your calories slightly. And lastly, keep in mind as well that even if calories in versus calories out is not a perfect model on paper, uh, which it isn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. And um, that's the other thing that people get wrong. They'll say, uh, oh, you know, you can't perfectly track your calories in versus calories out because of all of these different factors and therefore the whole model is completely worthless. No, even if it's not perfect, it's still close enough to produce the practical outcome that you're after. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's just a way to generally gauge what your maintenance calories are and to gauge that you are in fact in a calorie deficit, which usually is gonna fall somewhere around, uh, let's say 500 calories below maintenance per day. If tracking calories didn't work and it was just this chaotic uh, hit or miss approach, then bodybuilders and physique competitors would all just follow an intuitive eating approach and they wouldn't be getting absolutely shredded by tracking their calories and macros in detail. Um, I don't recommend following those types of extreme diets uh, or getting that lean either, but I'm just using that as an example to demonstrate the point. So bottom line guys, both your calorie intake on paper and your food selection play a role in the fat burning process and they both play a role in how effectively you're going to be able to adhere to your diet long term. And food quality definitely matters in terms of overall health, uh, gym performance, muscle growth, etc. And you should pay attention to both factors. But if your central goal is to lose body fat, it ultimately does boil down to maintaining a calorie deficit by expending more energy than you take in. That calorie deficit is going to be partially impacted by your food selection and your macronutrient ratio, but this is only true up to a limited point. And once you have uh, a primarily whole food, nutrient dense, protein sufficient diet in place with your meals laid out in a way that you enjoy most and that you can stick to, then calories in versus calories out is still the ultimate bottom line no matter what. And that's where your focus needs to be if you want to continue leaning down long term. If you found this advice helpful and you want to learn precisely how to tie this all together as far as an actual step by step uh, eating plan is concerned, so the proper amount of calories that you need, the macronutrients, uh, recommended food choices, and other factors as well, so that you can lose fat and put on muscle as effectively as possible, then make sure to take the physique quiz over at quiz.shawnnell.com because that will get you started with both the proper diet plan and also the proper workout plan that you need based on your current condition, goals, and your experience level. You can click up here for that or use the link in the description box below. On the supplementation side of things, you can also visit realscienceathletics.com to check out my research-backed, no BS formulas to help fully streamline your program and optimize your overall results. And you can use coupon code YouTube 15 to save 15% off your entire first order. The link for that is also in the description box. And as always, guys, make sure to hit that like button, leave a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already in order to stay up to date on all of my latest videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.